I didn't even know about it. Oh, man. Call me in order. Full County Board, Tuesday, October 13th, 9 a.m. Reach that session. We're called rolling. Oh, here. Anderson. Present. Barron. Here. Bill. Present. Crow. Present. Curtis. Here. Hampton. Here. Half Party. Here. Kyle. Here. Joyce. Here. Crumbly. Present. Lamine. Here. Herdley. Present. Raymond. Schmidt. Present. Schultz. Yes. Sure. Here. Wagmer. Willow. Newmark. Our prayer today is led by Reverend Kevin Murray from the Donovan and Crescent City Methodist Churches. Our heads for work prayer. Oh dear Lord. We pray that you can be with this board and have a lot of decisions to make. We just pray that you can be with them at this time for the betterment of the people in this county. And we just pray that you can grant them the wisdom and understanding and things going on and to help the people out. We just praise your name, or we can't do it without you. But when we come together and work together, it makes a whole lot of difference. And so we praise you for that. And we also at this time want to remember a friend who is known, the, the Mike Wheeler family, and you can we just pray that you can be with them at this time. You know it's a difficult time of losing a loved one. But we want to remember him at this time and to be with his family, to give them the comfort that they need, to get through today, the coming days, the coming weeks. It's never going to be easy. It's never easy losing a loved one. But we just pray that you can be with them. And we just praise your name. And thank you for today and every day that we have. Amen.
before constructing anything. In checking uh, the ordinance, I found that I cannot build within 20 feet of my neighbor's fence. Now, if you can picture a piece of property that's like this table, rectangular in shape, and the north end that's where I would like to build, and I can't build within 20 feet of it, according to that ordinance. An ordinance is a form of law to be obeyed, whether it makes sense or not. However, you can, through a variance, costly, you can overlook that ordinance. Uh, I, on Friday, September the 4th, I went to the Iroquois Planning and Zoning Department to ask my favorite question, why? Apparently, that zoning stipulation has been on the books for a long time and no one could give me an answer why. The chairman at that time said he would get back to me. That was September 4th. I've not heard from him since. Uh, I was told I could apply for a variance application at a cost of $400. To me, this made no sense since I had already paid for that 20 feet when I purchased the property. On top of it, there is no guarantee I could receive, I would receive a variance. A variance is a form of paying somebody to look the other way. A dictionary says a variance is a license to engage in an act contrary to a usual rule. The same dictionary says a bribe is something such as money uh, given to someone in a position of trust to induce him to act against the usual rule. Now the words are a little different, but the essence is there. <coughs> a bribe and a variance is the same thing. Well, the word shipper, they're the same. Ordinance should be confined to protecting the health and safety of citizens not solely to generate funded, uh, funds. Fees such as variance are another form of taxation. And we're already an over tax nation and especially state. I will work it out somehow to get what I need, but I will not bribe somebody to get it. The, the zoning and planning chairman still hasn't got back to me. Now, when I come into this building originally, when I moved into the area of that, <coughs> there was an office right here, and it was the chairman's office of the county board. I come in now, and where's, where's your office, Mr. Anderson? It's over here. Okay. All right. I need some place to drop little messages off, because every now and then, I run into something I need, and I don't want to be up here and take up your time for something that is in here. You guys want to try and read this. Here's the zoning and planning. Here's the Director of Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. And I just encountered this morning your public comment policy. I didn't intend to speak of this, but since I'm here, check it. There's a couple of items on here that supersede anything you want to put on paper. You can't do it. Now, I'm not going to make a big issue of that right now because somebody else may do that. And I would at like at this time like to compliment uh, Mr. Larry Hasbarden for his comment about people should get involved. And he's absolutely right because I see in here something happening, it's happening in the Illinois General Assembly, it's happening in Congress, we got us and them, the citizens. I'm sorry, but that's what it looks like. Your votes keep coming down with the same group on one side and the others on the other side. And boy, when you're, you can be compared to the Illinois General Assembly, Ooh, you look bad. I hope you're a whole lot better than them. They're disastrous. And Congress isn't any better. So
So please, would you vote for the citizen and not for your little group that has your particular agenda? Thank you. Committee met on September the 17th. Um, we approved the expenditures, and I have a copy of the expenditures if anybody wants to see those. There's also a copy in the clerk's office. There were no impact fees this month. The quarterly reports from the regional superintendent, we approved those. Uh, there was one thing that uh, involved Iroquois County, and that was an emergency uh, repair on windows at the Woodland Grade School. And we have the, uh, the architects have to approve anything that they do in the building before they can uh, say that it's been all finished. So the architects are very slow about getting there. So the reason that we don't have very many that are completely finished is because the architects haven't gotten there. That's always a slow process. We have received several grants. One is the Math and Science Grant. And in the airport <coughs> county, that will be used for alcohol prevention. It was a $75,000 grant. The uh, Pledge for Life Partnership Drug-Free Community Grant was $125,000. Um, substance Abuse had a grant. There's a Truancy Grant for $180,000. And there's never more than 5% of those grants used for uh, administrative costs. Then uh, our next meeting is Thursday. January 21st at 1 o'clock in Kankakee. And I have all the rest of the minutes and everything on my desk if anybody needs to look at those. Do you have an outside immunization report? Members of the county board, the committee to whom it was first policy procedure would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. The committee met at the administrative center on October 1st, 2015 at 9 a.m. Members present, Anderson, Bill, Scher, Schultz, and Barron. Stan Raymond, Kevin Hanson, and Troy Crumley were absent. Also present, county clerk Lisa Panther, treasurer Mindy Kintagan, finance director Anita Speckman, supervisor of assessments Bob Yergler, 911 director Nine Dubel, ICPHD administrator Dee Shippert, as the director Eric Safey, Item Director Ken Berry, County Board Members Charlie Elf, Donna Crow, and Larry Hathler. Carl Waters is signed to public. The meeting was called to order, but no public comment. Committee chairs meet a monthly report. Highway Chairman Russell Bill stated County Engineer Joel Moore will not be in attendance at the Highway Committee meeting. In his absence, Doug Butler will review claims to the committee. The committee will discuss the pipe bid. Management <coughs> Chairman Lyle Barron supported a housekeeping vacancy at the Administrative Center. The committee will discuss county farm management. Tax Chairman Dale Schultz will receive the normal reports, review animal control, and discuss the letter. Judicial Chairman John Scher reported normal reports will be received and the committee will take into consideration the hiring of a public defender to reduce costs. The Finance Committee will discuss the FY16 budget. That's the Director of Safety and recommended the county end the local disaster due to flooding as the town is now in recovery mode. Then the City of Wasika has their own declaration of disaster and he believes they have done the same. They will both coordinate with Mayor Bob Hartman. And for Chairman Kyle Anderson announced he spoke with Cameron Moore with Champagne Consortium about an upcoming vacancy on his board. Last month, their discovery provided results of the forensic audit. Anderson explained the next step within the findings of the state's attorney, Jim Devine. Devine will do the final necessary redacting and makes the remaining information public. The information that was presented last month has already been made public. 
oil. It was moved by Schultz and seconded by Barron to send the forensic audit findings to the State Attorney General Devine. Roll call vote taken, motion carried. Anderson asked the committee to review the salary detail on the fiscal 2016 budget. It said UCCI provides a practical guide to county government law book for all members. Within the book, it states the annual budget must contain any salary and wage or stipend under 55 ILCS 5 5 slash 6 dash 1002 finance director and leave inspection. Let's make sure the FY16 budget reflects this requirement. County Board Member Dale Schultz thanks Beckham for her work in discovering items the board hasn't been doing correctly all these years and is now moving in the correct direction. While reviewing budget items, sure notice the mental health detailed budget is not included in the county board budget. Beckham explains she did not receive, she does not receive a detailed budget for mental health. Sure asks that Beckham research this matter. Anderson distributed the latest soil and water report to the committee. <coughs> And then your review claim is moved by Sure and second by Schultz to pay the bill subject to county board approval. Roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. Under new business, Anderson mentioned the memorial collection and asked, if such thing currently exists, the matter was brought up due to a newly retired employee that passed, recently passed away. The discussion will be held at the full county board meeting. As there was no further business, it's come before the committee. It was moved by bills and second by Barron's to adjourn at 9, 17 a.m., all of which is respectfully submitted. Signed by all members present. I move for adoption. Any questions on the policy and procedure committee report? Jim? Jim? Hand that stuff over to you. What's that? That's the vote, the forensic audit stuff. That's sure. good. Any other questions? Any other questions?
individuals on probation assisting small removal mm -hmm. and concern for race. However, it turns out not to be an issue. Finance Director, I think this fact you noted the management committee had asked for advice from the current insurance policy about liability. Additionally, courthouse maintenance supervisor Larry Panky spoke with Judge Gordon Lustell about the matter, and Judge Lustell said, for state statute, the county is not liable if an individual gets injured. The management committee will continue their discussion. Susie Warner of Home Star Insurance Service said she was continuing to care, prepare for the county's benefits fair in November. Finance Chairman Kevin Hansen explained to the committee that the Special Finance Committee will more likely need to be scheduled due to changes that have recently surfaced. Stuckman reviewed the fiscal year 15 budget line on overruns with the committee. It was removed by Charlie Alton, seconded by Russell Hill to reduce the management and repair line items by $15,000, the telephone line item by $20,000, and the heating line item by $20,000, and to redistribute the funds to cover the shortfalls in the courts, state's attorney, and coroner. Roll call vote was taken, motion carried. Speckman also gave an update on the boiler ramp. No monies have been reinserted, received to reimburse the project as of yet. No action needs to be taken as of yet, but Speckman wanted to make sure the committee was aware of the transfer from the general fund to the grants fund may be necessary because we cannot end the year with a negative fund balance. The department has received a monthly report and they are as follows. Treasurer Mimi Coons-Hagan reported the second distribution of the second piece was done on September 25th. State uh, Attorney Jim Devine requested a decrease of 2,000 from education and reduce the thousands from criminal prosecution and these monies be appropriated to the state's attorneys, assistant state's attorneys line item. Google reported they have not re been receiving the wireless checks since September, which results in a $15,000 cut. House Bill 4035, which is mainly supported by Democrats, has requested all the wireless checks be released. Uh, Supervisor of Assessment Bob Yergler and his office are printing notices and will be publishing the week of the 19th. I see PhD Administrator B. Shepard reported the health department is financially solid at this time. They still have contracts and fees for services money coming in. At this time, there is a reserve balance to operate for five months. Uh, at some point, Shepard said she may be looking at decreasing mileage and training if needed. Divine offered an update on the blunt loan, stating the business is sustaining another flood recently. However, he said he should have some figures by the end of the month. The committee reviewed claims. It was moved by Dressman and seconded by Charlie Alt to pay the bill of sub accountable approval. A roll call vote was taken for motion carried. As there is no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Russell Bills, seconded by Ernie Curtis to adjourn at 936. The motion is carried by a voice vote. All which is respectively submitted and I move for its adoption. I'm not sure if that house, the House Bill 4, 4035 is the right House Bill. How does that make any difference? Do you know what it is? I can look that up. But House Bill 4035, um, it's criminal limitation theft, and it's already been to be referred to Rules Committee. So this bill has nothing to do with the same bill that you guys talked about. Well, the bill that reverse it. I think what Naya told us. At this point, Naya. Yeah. Thank you. We should find out what it is and put it in. Yeah. Right. For the record. Yeah. We're going to be in judicial. It's in judicial also, but it's also wrong. We'll get it right. Oh, Donna? Are we receiving 
payments pursuant to the latest agreement? Do we have an agreement on the revolving loan? We don't. We haven't received nothing right now. No. I got two guys saying no back there. <laughs> He's working on it for you. Well, then I'm going down. Any other questions on the finance committee report? Okay. Can you tell us what the special meeting might be about and whether what are some of the concerns? Uh, brought up some of the concerns are uh, outside agencies with how their budgets in our budget. As far as a detailed budget of theirs getting in ours, of the mental health, not in ours, but we have the health department in ours, uh, issue of roads, not compensation from one of the agencies, differing from how we're giving out raises. What's the third one? Oh, animal yeah, control. Or not yeah. I don't think we've got enough information together here. Well, I think the, um, the mental health is not the same as the public health because that money is levied and then it's given to the 7 away board and they decide, but that's definitely not the full budget of the mental health department. <clears throat> Getting more and more opinions of that coming in. Maybe a, a non-issue, but... Yeah, we got time. Yeah, we got a, we got a month yet. To, so we'll get our yeah. house and roll and do it right. I just thought it implied that we'd have to redo the whole budget. No. Okay. <laughs> just trying to do it right. Anita, do you want to redo the whole budget? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Any other questions on the finance committee report? Seeing none. I'll call the roll, please. No. <laughs> yes. Curtis. Yes. 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 The committee met at the Administrative Center on October 6, 2015 at 11.15 a.m. Members President are Anderson and Shirt. Captain Hanson and Dan Raymond are also present with Joint Dispatch Telecommunicators Travis Waters, Stacey Schultz, and Josh Harris, 911, ETFB Director Ida Dubel, Finance Director Anita Stackman, Board of Labor and Legal Representative Dave Evans, FOP Legal Representative Jeff Burke, and Federal Mediation and Conciliation, Conciliation Service Commissioners Joe Dula and Kevin Farrell. Meeting, meeting was called to order. Committee met to discuss ongoing negotiation activities. The adjourned at 220. Also, I think I'm going to this present. This is the next call. We have another mediation session on October 20th. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mr. Chairman and members of the county board, your committee to whom was referred management services would beg leave your to submit the following report on the matter before them. Your committee met at the administrative center on September 8, 2015 at 11.30 a.m. Members present were Barron, Crow, Schur, Alt, F. Bargain, and Joyce. Evan Dumont was absent. Also present, county board chairman Kyle Anderson, county board vice chairman Dan Raymond, Finance Director Anita Speckman, mm -hmm. County Board Member Gene Hiles, and the Iroquois County Resident Marvin Sicknoff and Barbara Witt. The meeting was called to order. There were no public comments. Management Chairman Lyle Barron proceeded to open the eight field bids received for the county farm lease. They were as follows. McTaggart Brothers, 150 per acre. Trust 718, 150 per acre. Daniel Corgai, 200 per acre. David Scott Johnson, 200 per acre. Carly Farms, 190 per acre. DNS Farms Partnership, 250 per acre. Bauer Crop and Cattle, 200 per acre. Walker Place, 200 per acre. With DNS Farms Partnership as a high bidder, Barron's allowed others to raise their bids. The bidding history follows. McTaggart Brothers, no raise. Trust 718, no raise. 
Kevin Scott Johnson, no raise. Carlos Farms, no raise. Carl Cross and Cattle, no raise. Daniel Tordai, first raise, 255. Second raise is 265. Third raise is 275. Fourth raise is 290. Fifth raise, 300. Sixth, 308. Walker Place, first raise, 260. Second raise, 270. Third raise, 285. Fourth raise, 295. Fifth raise, 305. Sixth raise, 310. DNS partnership. First raise, 315 per acre. During the bidding process, Walker placed questions the change made in the lease pertaining to the products being used and having to be approved by the committee. They stated it's difficult to offer a base price if they are unaware of what product can be used. Parents say there have been issues with byproducts being spread on and the committee would like better control over it. Parents suggested buying an entire inventory list to the committee in advance for approval. Mr. Terry McTaggart with McTaggart Brothers noted in Section 3 of the lease state book. Leaseor is responsible for all tile repair. Parents said tile issue was brought forward to the county engineer Joel Moore and it appears to be a state issue. Parents asked if additional for additional bid raises, it was moved by Dan Joyce, Dan Joyce, seconded by John Short, closed bidding for the county farm lease, motion carried by a voice vote. DNS Farms Partnership was the high bidder. It was moved by John Short, seconded by Charlie Hall to accept DNS Farms Partnership bid of 315 per acre. The roll call vote was taken, motion carried. Under new business, Larry Hathbar expressed concern about the tile issue and would like to see action taken. Aaron said the topic has been discussed during previous management committee meetings, but he will add it to the agenda. It was moved by all, seconded by Donna Crow to adjourn the meeting at 12.08 a.m., motion carried by voice vote, all of which is successfully submitted, and I move to its adoption. Motion on the floor to accept the management committee report. Second, Donna Crow. Any questions on the first management committee report? Meeting was adjourned at 12.08 p.m. That will not be convenient to the public. We ought to cut the
0060 drive formula, 1846 drive formula, 1152 drive formula, 28% liquid, 82% anhydrous ammonia, standard granular or fine texture line. Uh, at cultural, commonly used herbicides, all of the above work are common standard use for fertilizers, no byproduct substances. It's moved by Adam Zomal, protected by Pro to approve DNS farms for fertilizer product list for use on the county farm. Motion carried by a voice vote. The committee to discuss fertilizer bids is moved by Crow and seconded by Zumwalt to let out fertilizer bids once the results are received from soil testing. Motion carried by a voice vote. The committee also discussed the change in verbiage on the county farm contract saying that the use and application of any product must be must receive prior approval for from the Iroquois County Management Committee. Parents ask the committee for direction when something important comes up with the county farm between me. Yes, if they would prefer a special meeting be called to order or if they would like to sign individuals to make these decisions. It was moved by Asbar and second by Zumwalt to assign County Board Chairman Kyle Anderson, Managed Services Committee Chairman Lyle Barron, and Managed Services Committee Vice Chairman Don Crow authority to make timely decisions regarding the county farm. In the event something needs to be handled, prior to the regularly scheduled management committee meeting. Motion carried by a voice vote. Maintenance supervisor Clyde Mintz reported on the following. Label Inflation Inc. was on site to do their inspection. The finance office painting project is complete. Proper for the finance office is expected for next week. The punch list for the boiler is expected to be completed today. The housekeeping vacancy has been filled. Maintenance Supervisor Larry Panky reported on the following. Panky spoke with County Engineer Joel Moore about the use of a small truck and salt shaker now that we are not subcontracting the snow removal. He also talked to probation about some of their adult clients assisting with snow shoveling for their community hours. The air conditioners have been kicking off at the jail and courthouse. All filters have been changed. Also, the boilers are on and running. Finance Director Anita Speckman gave an update on the boiler. She said she spoke to the state of Illinois and they instructed her to file for an extension. The end date of the grant was September 30th. Speckman did as instructed and wrote a letter asking for an extension. She will also talk to the Finance Committee about loaning the grant funds 45000 because the fund currently is in the negative. Parents received the FY 16 capital improvements, which include includes the heat pump for the administrative building, water lines for the jail, and touch up paint for the exterior of the administrative building. Sealed quotes were opened for the heat pump number six in the health department. They are as follows. Whoever plumbing and heating ink ten thousand and seventy dollars CNC plumbing and heating ink thirteen thousand six hundred and ten. It is moved by Charlie Alton, seconded by Larry Hathbarton to accept the quote by Weber Plumbing and Heating Inc. in the amount of 10070 to replace heat pump number 6 in the health department. The roll call vote was taken, motion carried. The committee reviewed the claims. It is moved by Crow and seconded by Zumwalt to pay the bill subject to county board approval. Motion carried by a roll call vote. Under new business, Darren added at Speckman about the 18th contract expiring May 2016. Speckman advised the committee not to take action until February 2016. This is moved by Pat Barton, second by Zumwalt, to adjourn the meeting at 10.06 a.m. Motion carried by a vote vote, all which is respectfully submitted, and I ask for approval. Motion on the board, accept the management committee report. Second, Crow. Questions on this report? A couple of clarifications. Um, on page one, oh, down three quarters of the way down. DNS Farm Partnership, the current county farm lessee. That's not the current. That's the. Um, let me see. Find the word. Um, the next. next. The future. Future. Yeah. Right. And um, then. In the next paragraph about the soil testing, we selected BCSL LLC for soil testing by soil type. So I think that should be added because that's 
why we made that decision, basically. And then on the next page, maintenance supervisor Larry Pankey um, There's been quite a bit of discussion about insurance and everything. Was the final decision or are we still exploring that option? Well, I mean, it's my understanding opinions of the judge and everything else that we won't be liable if somebody does get hurt as far as a probation person. But okay, so further discussion will come. Yeah, we'll probably talk about it. Okay. Hopefully we got time for it. Right, hopefully. Hopefully. I think that's all I have. Any other questions? I guess I have a question. Since I have one day during that vote, does that take care of if I vote yes? I will continue abstaining. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Court of Color Old Lee? F. Barton? Yes. Kyle? Yes. Joy? Yes. From Weedy? Yes. Lumine? Yes. Herdley? Yes. Smith? Yes.
uh, expected from 485 million to 495 million uh, for use in the levy process per his discussions with Yurgla. Schultz reviewed each fund in the levy with the committee. He stated the levy does not have to be approved until December. The committee went on to discuss instant assessments. Yurgler said typically by state statute the value of a property is based on what the property is assessed for on January 1st of the assessment year. Instant assessments are prorated based on date of completion. He, al he also noted the Airplay County has never followed the practice of instant assessments. Yurgler continued stating the pop Pilot Hill wind farm is located on both sides of the county line, Kankakee and Yurkla, with Kankakee opting for instant assessment. Yurgler said, if we choose to change what has been done in the past, our publishing will be delayed by about two months, causing a delay next year in printing tax bills. He suggested contacting State's Attorney Jim Devine about beginning instant assessments after the new year, but urged the committee not to do so in the middle of the year. It was moved by Persley and seconded by Troy Crumley to maintain to existing county assessment policy as opposed to instant assessment. Motion carried by a voice vote. Schultz made the committee aware of the county's contract with the delinquent tax agent expired in May and needs to be extended while we look at other avenues. It was moved by Schmidt and seconded by Persley to request Ballinger's, the company of delinquent tax and agent, to extend the expired contract for one year ending May 15, 2016. Motion carried by a voice vote. As there was no other business to come forward, come before the committee, it was moved by Schmidt and seconded by Kremlin to adjourn the meeting at 10 or 1 a.m. Motion carried by voice so all of which is sub respectfully submitted, signed by all members present, and I move for its adoption. Motion on the board is up tax later in board, or tax commit. Any questions on the report? Jim, what? Did you have a chance to look at that contract and see anything? I didn't see anything that was prohibited us from being stuck for a multi multiple years. I don't. Yes. Joyce. Yes. Crumley. Yes. 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 Schmidt. Yes. Chairman and members of the county board. Your committee to whom was referred help would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center October 6, 2015 at 10.17 a.m. Members present were Crumwoody, Schultz, Schmidt, and Persley. Whitlow was absent. Also present, County Board Chairman Kyle Anderson, Finance Director and the Executive Treasurer and Lee Kuntagen, ICPHD Administrator D. Schiffer, and County Board members Ask bargain and sure. The meeting was called to order. There are no public comments. ICPHD Administrator D. Shepard distributed a summary report of activities for community and school health programs, environmental and senior programs, and a grant and contract spreadsheet. Shepard's summary report reflected a rise in numbers for environmental health. Shepard said inspections increased from the month of August to September. Community health has also shown an increase because of immunizations. Flu clinics are also beginning. Shepard stressed that the health department is still stable even without state funds. Unlike other surrounding health departments, she has not been forced to lay off or take furlough days. Health Committee Chairman Troy Crumley asked Shepard where her department stands now versus where they were a year ago. Shepard explained initially she began with 17 employees, 11 part-time and 6 full-time employees. She now has five part-time 
employees and 11 full-time employees. With an estimated five-month reserve balance in the books, Shepard said she doesn't anticipate needing to cut down service hours. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Schultz and seconded by Schmidt to pay the claims subject to county board approval. Motion carried by a roll call vote. Under new business, Board of Health President John Schur presented the committee with a copy of the state statute and an attorney general's opinion that relates to the Board of Health approving claims for the health department instead of the health committee. Schur and Shepard will continue to present the current reports each month and the committee will receive the monthly claim sheet. It was moved by Schultz and seconded by Schmidt to table the subject until the following health committee, health committee meeting to allow the committee members ample time to study the statute provided. Motion carried by a voice vote. It was moved by Persley and seconded by Schultz to adjourn at 10 50 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote. All which is respectfully submitted, signed by all members present, and I move for its adoption. I move to order the health committee report. Is there a second? Second. Do you want to clarify some yeah. things that I figured you would? Know? It says 11 part-time, that we began with 17 employees, we did. It was 11 full-time and 6 part-time. We now have yeah. 11 full-time and 5 part-time. Any questions? Board? Hearing none. Joyce? Yes. Crowley? Yes. Lee? Yes. Persley? Yes. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred IT would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on October 6, 2015 at 10.53 a.m. Members present were Crumwoody, Schultz, Bills, and Anderson. Also present, Finance Director Anita Speckman, Treasurer Minnie Coons-Hagan, ICPHD Administrator Dee Shepard, Supervisor of Assessments Bob Yerber, 911 Director Nina Doodle, and County Board members Hasbar and Hiles and Schur. The meeting was called to order. There were no public comments. Finance Director Anita Speckman discussed the Avila HR module she purchased with County Board Chairman Kyle Anderson's approval. The new module will assist with the new tax form that is required through the Affordable Care Act. These forms report to the IRS who has health insurance and who does not. The new module does the majority of the work in principal form. It was moved by Bills and seconded by Anderson to adjourn at 11.04 a.m. Motion carried, all of which is respectfully submitted, signed by all members present, and I move for its adoption. Motion on board, accept the IT committee report. Second. Second. Russell Bill. Questions? Clarifications on the debt? Do we need a, uh, to add a motion to the, to justify the expense or is it taken care of by your, okay. Uh, we have the money in the budget, so, yeah. Okay. How much do we end up saving? Oh. By ordering it right away, yeah. $560. Questions? All roll, please. From Lee. Yes. Levine. Yes. Hersley. Yes. Schmidt. Yes. Holt. Yes. Schur. Yes. Hall. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Barron. Yes. Bill. Yes. Crow. Yes. Curtis. Yes. 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 Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred Judicial and Public Safety would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the courthouse on October 7, 2015 at 3 p.m. Members present were Schur, Barons, Curtis, Lamy, and Whitlow. Donna Crow and Jean Howells were absent. Also present, Sheriff Derek Hagan, Probation Director Tom Latham, 
Circuit Clerk Lisa Hines, State's Attorney Jim Devine, 911 Director Lana Dubel, Judge James Kinzer, Finance Director Anita Speckman, and Carla Waters with the Times Republic. The meeting was called to order. There were no public comments. Sheriff Derek Hagan's monthly report for September included Patrol had 591 calls for service for the month of September. Year-to-date calls for service, 4,764, a 3% increase over 2014. Booked in 70 prisoners for the month of September. Year-to-date book in 638. Average daily population in September, 37. Average length of stay for September, 30 days. Year-to-date average population, 27. Year-to-date average length of stay, 13 days. Overtime in the jail for September was 252 hours on the schedule. Part-time correctional officer worked 12 hours. <coughs> probation Director Tom Latham reported Kankakee County received a grant to fully fund a probation officer. Also, there are currently two minors in detention. Judge James Kinzer said he is in the early stages of discussing the hiring of an assistant public defender. Kinzer said he still needs to speak with public defender Dale Stroll and discuss salary. He estimates the hiring of this person could save the county approximately $20,000. He would like the matter to remain on the agenda for future discussion. Last month, the committee discussed the possibility of hiring an additional public defender due to the cost involved with special attorney hires. The committee in Lustville reviewed the special attorney hire spreadsheet prepared for them by finance director Anita Speckman. Lustville said he would like the opportunity to speak with Judge James Kinzer about the topic more before any decisions are made. Circuit Clerk Lisa Hines distributed her monthly report to the committee for review and stated her numbers have increased by approximately $9,000 with the help of a new collection agency. 911 Director Nida Dubu issued her ETSP report for September. Total calls for service, 2,082. Police, 1,284. Fire, 96. Ambulance, 427 with 250 change of quarters. Coroner, 14. Animal Control, 11. Last month, 16% of the 911 calls received were landline and 84% were wireless, with a total of 2,322 911 calls received. There were 3,982 non-emergency calls received. Telecommunicators worked 140 hours overtime in September. Overtime has decreased due to a new telecommunicator working on her own. Dubal reported the August wireless check was received, but we have not received the check for September, which results in a $15,000 cut. House Bill 4035, which is mainly supported by Democrats, has requested all wireless checks be released. Under new business, Judicial Chairman John Schur discussed the possibility of adults on probation or trustees using their community service hours to assist in shoveling snow at the courthouse and administrative center. The topic was brought to light during the management committee meeting, but concerns regarding liability became an issue. Finance Director Anita Speckman contacted the county's insurance company and they stated the individuals would create an undesirable risk and would be excluded from our coverage. Beckman explained that maintenance supervisor Larry Pankey spoke with Judge Gordon Lustfeld after the management meeting and Judge Lustfeld provided Pankey with a state statute that says the county is not liable except in cases of willful or gross negligence, thus meaning these individuals are able to perform said duty without the county being liable. Beckman noted she has a call in to Dave Hibben our contact at the state's attorney's appellate prosecutor's office to understand if we will have a union issue by having these individuals perform these responsibilities. Latham added that juveniles are limited and the amount of adults with community service hours to choose from is slim. 
The committee reviewed claims. It was moved by Ernie Curtis and seconded by Jed Whitlow to pay the claims subject to county board approval. The roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. And if there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Curtis and seconded by Vince Lee to adjourn the meeting at 3.29 p.m. Motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted, signed by all members present, and I would move forward to that. Motion on a vote accepted. The additional public safety has been reported. Is there a second? Curtis? The House bill number is 4305. Any other questions? Yes. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom is referred planning and zoning is I believe to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on October 9, 2015 at 1015 a.m. Members present were Curtis, Scherr, and Joyce. Dan Raymond, Adam Sumalt, and Troy Crumley who were absent. Also present, County Board Chairman Kyle Anderson, State's Attorney Jim Devine, and County Board Member Charlie All. The meeting was called to order. There were no public comments. The committee reviewed the Planning and Zoning Office report for September. It read as follows. Building permits in September 2015, Residential 98, Agriculture 1. Building permits in fiscal year 15, Residential 65, Agriculture 14, Wind Towers 1. Building inspections in September 2015 was 26. The committee held a discussion on the enforcement of ordinances. State's Attorney Jim Devine simply stated, it takes money to enforce these ordinances. There are many properties that need condemned, but there are no funds to do so. John Schur asked that the county should begin by establishing a fund and levy for it. Devine agreed this would be a good way to begin the process. The kennel ordinance was discussed next. Devine noted the ordinance used to be handled through the zoning office and animal control. A letter from Ted Horner was received and distributed to the committee members regarding the Regional Planning Commission. The letter states diminishing the Regional Planning Commission is a violation of the Iroquois County Zoning Ordinance. Devine reminded the committee the Regional Planning Commission was dissolved in February 2013 but still remains in the subdivision ordinance. If we would like to continue with the Regional Planning Commission, Devine suggested a text amendment to the amount of meetings required from no less than 12 per year to as needed. However, the Regional Planning Commission can continue to be disbanded and be removed from the Municipal Code, and if a circumstance comes up where a subdivision is being built, the beginning process is to start with the Zoning Committee. It was moved by Dan Joyce and seconded by Ernie Curtis to remove the Regional Planning Commission from the Municipal Code. Motion carried by a voice vote. The nuisance ordinance was discussed briefly and tabled until the next zoning meeting. Sir questioned the kennel ordinance, why the ordinance only refers to dogs and no other animals. Also, he asked where the quantity of four dogs came from. Devine believed it to come from a state statute at the time it was written or from the previous Animal Control Administrator's experience. The matter was tabled to allow the committee to review it further. The committee reviewed claims that was moved by Curtis and seconded by Joyce to pay the bill subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. If there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Curtis and seconded by Joyce to adjourn at 11.09 a.m. Motion carried, all of which is respectfully submitted, signed by all members present, and I move forward to adoption. Motion on the floor to set the plan and vote committee report is our second. And 
We didn't have 98 permits in the month of September. No, it was either 9 or 8. I can't remember where it fell top of my head. <laughs> we couldn't have had 98 and less than that for the whole year. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> the line. Yes, Donna? Um, I'm not at all clear on my memory, other zoning members. About the Regional Planning Commission, at that time when we disbanded it, I thought that we couldn't take it, didn't the state require us to have a regional planning commission, which is why we didn't do that? Did we just make them inactive? We, we took the per diem off the county, the zoning board of appeals, that was all at that same time. Well, when I read the minutes from February of 2013, it was a motion to disband it. So that's what the... But what does the statute, what does the statute... It doesn't require you. It doesn't. It talks about regional planning, but it doesn't make it a condition of having a planning board. I mean, it's encouraged, I guess, but uh, it's not a requirement. Okay. I'm not questioning the reading of the minutes. However, my recollection is that we put it on an as-needed basis, as opposed to disbanding and, and such. Uh, put on an as-needed as basis with emphasis uh, as most of the members at that time concurred that they were meeting too often. It was, it was too cumbersome a process. Uh, the process should be, or their responsibility in reviewing should be limited to subdivisions and, and uh, Over, overall plans, comprehensive plans for for the uh, county of Iroquois. Uh, I think the, the the idea back then was to have the expertise, uh, more expertise than we find on normally on county board committees for specific things. Uh, and that was the importance of the planning of the regional planning commission, and which included real estate uh, developers, uh, uh, lawyers, uh, a lot of the, the professions within the county that dealt with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, possibly <laughs> with uh, uh, that. It would it would personally be. My own desire and recommendation to keep the Regional Planning Commission to uh, put it definitely on a limited basis, not including house building and, and cocaine, those sort of things. Uh, but the uh, the only basis that I remember was the, was the question about the letter from. Uh, Ted Horner that I finally found in my files and, and forwarded to uh, uh, to the committee. So whatever works, that's all. That's what I remember anyway. Uh, uh, further recollection is, is that the Regional Planning Commission specifically um, dealt when Dale said compre with comprehensive view all of the little orange circles and the development of the, of the county and those members of the Regional Planning Commission were specifically chosen from every region so that um, there was adequate representation throughout the county so you know I sort of agree with Dale as needed they aren't needed frequently but if we don't have them, then we, you know, if we, if we get a big subdivision or something else, then we have to start from ground zero. Mm -hmm. Well, I can just say what some of the thinking of the committee was, that right now there are no members on the Regional Planning Commission, and that if someone came in tomorrow and wanted to get a subdivision, going to Mr. Nervo's office, they really couldn't do it because we don't have a reason. That's the first step in the subdivision ordinance is written right now. And uh, 
in order, you know, it could take several months before you move, or, or longer before you find people who are willing to serve on the regional planning commission. We have these same problems with other boards and other other areas of our operation as well. So it was felt by the committee that, that the zoning committee had the competence to at least get the process started. And that's the, that's the reason for, for doing this. <coughs> the subdivision ordinance is intended to be a step-by-step -step plan or process for someone wanting to uh, build a subdivision so that they know exactly what steps to take to go through. First they go here, then they go there, and it's approved by this person and so forth. Um, I think it, to me it's pretty, pretty explicit and pretty clear. The fact that there's no members on that committee at this point in time is the reason the deep six is completed. It doesn't make any sense to me. If there's a reason to have the regional, regional planning commission, there's a process that you go through to establish the membership, etc. Uh, it's not just the idea of throwing it away. The uh, there isn't now, as there never has been, the necessary expertise on the Planning and Zoning Committee or any other county committee in order to establish uh, zoning rules that make sense to the world. Uh, expertise is needed. We like to use as much local expertise as we can get, but um, just throwing away the possibility and centralizing the power in county board committees is not the answer as far as I'm concerned.
repair sent some of the road more that bad. The cost of the repair of the 4.5 miles was $304,000. Another part of the lawsuit includes the claims that the company was bringing in. He said that the previ uh, previous crane company also called in advance to let them know when they're coming, uh, while the current company does not. The agreement takes several items that mu they must follow, and they was not following any of them. Because of this, the roads were have to be inspected four times. Right before they arrived, right after the train set up, before the train leave, and after the, after the train leave. Last thing Mr. Nina was happy to report the township did receive a settlement check in the amount of $288,328 for the damage, damage road in July and August. And the matter is completely settled. This is an update from the road. The financial reports for the month were reviewed. It was moved by Gene Hiles and second by Larry Hashbarton to pay the bill subject to county board approval. The roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. County highway was $398,165. County bridge was $8,687. County matching was $19,361. Township grid was $7,890. County motor fuel tax was $144,712. And township motor fuel tax was $208,647. <coughs> Assistant County Engineer Doug Lutzel both the quotes for box culverts in the Pigeon Grove and Ash Grove. They are as follows. County materials. New bids for Pigeon Grove for 14,310 and for Ash Grove of 20,988. McCann Concrete Box for Pigeon Grove was 13,170 and Ash Grove Township for 17,320. But that's all knows McCann Concrete Box included a combined bid if they were to be if they were to receive both bids. It was moved by Hiles and second by Crow to accept the proposed from the Camp Country Park for the box, box culverts in Pigeon Grove and High School pending review. The motion carried by roll call vote. Highway <coughs> 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 I would chairman Russell Bill spoke in of the timely death of the recently retired county highway on board. He asked Kyles to speak with the minister at the county board meeting to offer a moment of silence in his honor. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Dale Schultz and second by Sally Officer to adjourn at 9 37 a.m. That motion carried. All which is respectfully submitted, signed by all members present, and I will move to the adoption of this report. Motion on the board, accept the presentation of the highway committee report. Is there a second? That's yes, wrong. Well. Questions? Okay, done. Roll roll, please. Schmidt. Yes. Schultz. Yes. Sure. Yes. Paul. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Marin. Yes. Bill. Yes. Curtis. Yes. Ashburn. Yes. Hyatt. Yes. Joyce. Yes. Crumley. Yes. Lamine. Yes. Hurdley. Yes. Okay. Next up, we have appointment. The appointment by the Mayor's Commissioner. We have a motion to approve the appointment. So moved. Crumley is a second. <coughs> Questions on the appointment? Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion one. On the agenda, have a claim left in front of you. We have a motion to approve the claim. John Schur, second. Charlie Alt. Any questions on the claim? Okay, 